Hi, pet lovers. Thank you for joining Gina's Grooming Channel. Today, our discussion is going to be on professional grooming dryers. Okay, so we're going to talk about the different types of grooming dryers that exist for you professionally. We're going to talk about how to use them properly and safely. We're also going to be talking about maintenance. So definitely don't turn off the video because we have to talk about maintenance because these guys, they have motors in them. We're working with hair so they can catch on fire. So I'm going to definitely talk about maintenance, making sure that doesn't happen to you. And then we're going to finish with a bit of a feel test so you can understand the ways that the different dryers work and how strong they are. So before we jump into professional grooming dryers, let's uh, ask the basic general obvious question. What's wrong with this, right? Why can't we use one of these guys, right? We all know this is what we use for ourselves. Why can't we use this on our pets? Well, let me answer this. If you've got a very small pet with a very thin coat and you watch the heat setting on this and you keep it moving, sure, you can use your home handheld dryer to dry your very small, very fine coated dogs. But we have to understand that dogs have undercoat. Most of them do. And so that's not like humans. It's a very different animal, literally, quite literally. Uh, so we have to understand it's not only more dense, it's a lot more profuse, right? So the whole entire animal is covered with air. So we have to make sure to be prepared if we're going to be working with animals, any large dogs or cats with a lot of profuse coat. This guy just isn't going to cut it. You're going to have to go pro. Be aware that professional pet grooming dryers do come either with a heat element or without a heat element. So make sure you're aware of that uh, because in terms of the heat element, there's going to be some settings and a little more attention that you need to give, even though it does come in very handy. But just be aware that if you buy a dryer with a heat element, you're going to have to be a little more vigilant when you're using it. So let's start with the types of grooming dryers there are out there for you. Okay, we're going to start with our basic hose dryer. Okay, so this is an example of a hose dryer. So we have our drying component. This one does have a heating element to it. So there's a setting for low heat, there's a setting for high heat, and there's a setting for no heat. But what this does, it provides air going out of a hose, okay, so that we can dry dogs. Let me kind of turn this on so you can see what I'm talking about here. Okay, so it's blowing air, right? And then we have variable speed on this one in order to be able to dry your pet. Now, for hose drying, there's also um, things called nozzles, attachment nozzles, or reducers, um, which reduce the air flow on the hose. Uh, so these guys, I just want to show you how they work. They're going to make sure that the airflow is much more focused. Okay? And this is wonderful when you have big, hairy dogs. Just a note of caution, if you have a small dog, do not use reducing hoses with any uh, high velocity or powerful air. You can actually hurt them uh, because this can get very, very powerful. Okay. You want to reserve reducing nozzles for large dogs that can handle it. So how do we use hose dryers, right? So if we're not using a reducing nozzle, which is definitely not necessary for every single dog, we have an open nozzle here and the diameter of this nozzle does differ by manufacturer, but you can use this directly on a dog, right? But what you want to remember is when you're using a hose dryer, you're always going to be moving that hose. You're not going to let it sit in one place okay? because it's, even without the heat element, there's still a motor in here and that motor is going to be getting hot. So even if you don't put the heating element, this air is going to get hotter. So you don't want to keep it in one place. You want to make sure keep moving this hose make sure that it doesn't get too hot for your pets now to kind of close up the hose dryer i have a hose dryer that's a canine two uh, this is a flying pig um both i really like i've had the canine two for over 12 years and it's still working we're going to talk about the maintenance on these guys but just want to tell you that this guy has two motors and it's on the bottom there so again 12 years old and i use it all the time with my pets keep it updated, but it does not have a heating element to it, uh, but it has two motors. So this has a variable motor that I showed you. That one, I can either go a little more forceful air or extra forceful air, depending on how many motors I'm using, either one or two. So the next type of dryer that we're going to discuss is a stand dryer. A stand dryer is a dryer that we can use 
to give us hands-free abilities. So while we're using a stand dryer, we can use both our hands and manage a dog, right? And brush and fluff and do all sorts of things with the stand dryer. Now the stand dryer also works really well with timid dogs. It's not like you're taking a directed hose, right? So if a dog is really timid, you've got this air coming with your air hose, right? With your hose dryer. Some dogs uh, are not very good with that. Sometimes they get scared of that. So having a stand dryer is really, really good to have, especially with timid dogs. I also use the stand dryer for face and head and neck work um, because it's a much more relaxed way to dry around the head and face. So I'm gonna give you guys just a quick little demo of what I'm talking about. I'm gonna turn it on. This is very low airflow, okay? So if I'm working on a dog, here, it's just a gentle airflow so I can fluff up and work with them with both my hands free. Now, I will tell you as a pro, I actually use a stand dryer and a hose dryer for most of the dogs that come to see me. So if I have a dog on the table, I usually will be drying head and face and neck with the stand dryer and finishing off their body with the hose as long as they're not too timid, um, as long as they're well balanced. So it kind of looks something like this. Blow drying a dog, stand dryer blowing by their face and head, right? And I'm using two devices at once. Now, big caution about using two devices at once. You have to make sure that you plug them in in two different circuits unless you have a circuit that's about a 40 amp circuit because this guy's pulling about 13, 12, 13 amps. Uh, the other dryer is pulling about the same, if not more. Um, and if I turn on the heating element, even more. Uh, so you will blow your fuse if you put this on the same circuit under normal circumstances, unless you have a high amp line. Okay, guys, I'm going to also talk about kennel drying. Now, I don't do kennel drying. I'm a private groomer, but I have, and most well-balanced dogs do just absolutely fine with it. But just if you can picture, if you have a kennel, um, you are going to have hooks, right? A, an attachment that you attach a hose to your kennel dryer, and that will circulate gentle air around an animal, around your pet, and get them dry. This is considered actually very humane uh, because as long as you don't have this blowing too hard, it's a really relaxing way to get the dogs dried. Just wanted you guys to be aware of another type of professional uh, grooming dryer is a kennel dryer, or you could get attachments for your existing dryer. And guys, in addition to our hose dryers, our stand dryers, our kennel dryers, there are also machines like big boxes called box dryers that also circulate warm air around a pet. Uh, those are really, really expensive. You'll usually see them in large luxury salons, not in private small salons. But just be aware that there are things called box dryers that are designed to have a pet walk into them and that air circulates around them so that they get dry very, very gently. All right, guys, let's talk maintenance because when I said that these things can catch fire, I am not kidding. Uh, it happens because we have rotary motor happening, right, inside these guys. We've got hair blowing, and if we don't manage the filter and keep it clean and maintain it, that hair can get into the motor, and guess what happens? Heat, hair causes fires. So we have to make sure to maintain our stuff. Now, um, every dryer has a filter. I kept this uh, a little too long just so I can kind of demonstrate to you guys what you need to do, but for every single dryer, you're gonna have a type of filter that is filtering things from the motor, okay? This is all the hair that I've collected through about a week, okay? And this needs to be removed, thrown away, and then this filter is usually removable. You can wash this and replace it as well. And then look at all of this that came through. So if there was a hole in this filter, you can imagine all of this hair getting in there, right? And imagine it all catching fire, okay? Now you've got a nice little fire happening, which you do not want. Uh, so make sure, understand that for every dryer you have, you have this for your personal handheld dryers as well. But when we're dealing with dogs and undercoats, this collects a lot, a lot faster, especially if you're working pro, because you've got a lot of dogs. So just within a week, if this went into the motor, you can imagine what kind of a fire you can start. So be very, very careful. Not a big deal to maintain your dryer. Make sure that your filter is in good condition. There are no holes, no rips, no tears. If there are, just go ahead, replace it, and make sure that you keep this nice and clean and free of hair.
And let's not forget that uh, there are brushes in a lot of these motors. It's not a brushless motor for a lot of these guys. And those brushes need to be replaced by a professional usually. Um, so the K92 that I have on my floor, which is a little too big to pick up, uh, that guy, like I said, I've had for 12 years. I've probably serviced it four times. But let me just tell you, if you take care of it and you service it, it should be with you for a long time. Okay, guys, don't laugh. This is going to be a test. We're actually going to do a test of some of this equipment. Um, so you can see, and I'm also going to give you a baseline um, of this equipment. So what I did is I put a piece of fake fur here onto a grooming arm. I'm going to go through some of the equipment that we talked about. So you can understand the power of some of the things that we're going to be working with and the differences between them. Now, in your search for a dryer, a professional pet grooming dryer, there's a lot of different ways that power is noted. Uh, so some of the manufacturers are talking about horsepower. So you'll see the power of that motor being gauged in horsepower. And then other manufacturers aren't rating their devices on horsepower. They're rating it on other factors. One of the ones that you'll see out there is called CFM. That's a cubic foot per minute. Okay, so that's a designation of airflow. You're also going to see things for air velocity. That is designated as FPMs. Uh, so if you see FPM, that is foot per minute. Okay, so that's going to be the designation of air velocity. So what I'm going to do is actually do a field test so you guys can see how the different uh, dryers that I have work. Um, okay, and then I'm going to give you a baseline of my flying pig dryer. I bought this about two years ago. Um, and as you can see, it's not only a stand dryer, but this is also a hose dryer. So it's kind of really cool. I can do both with it. Um, but I'm going to give you a baseline of this guy's stats. You can see how it performs. And then when you're looking for a dryer that works for you, you can at least have a baseline to understand the differences of airflow, air velocity, horsepower, whatever it is that the manufacturers are specifying um, so that you can choose the right one for you. All right, guys, for a little bit of fun, let's start with our handheld one. Here we've got some fabric um, on a stick, on our grooming stick. So here's our low, and I'm gonna keep this from this distance, okay? And here's our high. Okay. All right. So we can see the airflow of that. Let's go one step up. Let's do a small hose dryer. Okay. This is a, a small portable dryer. Um, this is actually only blows eight amps. So kind of low on the amp, but really great to have if you're doing any kind of traveling grooming. Great for a backup. Let's take a look at how powerful this guy is. And this is our dryer. Okay. From the same exact position to our thing. Okay, see even our small dryer, even a tiny little portable dryer for professional pet grooming is definitely outperforming our human handheld dryer. Okay, let's see how our stand dryer performs. Now, this is a variable speed uh, dryer, so let's start from the slowest. Really nice gentle air, and this guy has a heating element. Uh, so we just have to make sure it doesn't get too hot, but nice, wonderful, warm air. Let's increase this airflow here. Okay, going at a really good clip. So this stand dryer, still going, same distance. You can really see the difference between this and a smaller dryer. Now I'm going to use my K92. Um, this is a very powerful dryer. I'm going to use it with one motor and I'm going to show you with two motors. Um, but I use this without any kind of reducing nozzle. This, I get really close to the dogs, keep moving it. This is my go-to dryer. So I'm going to show you from the same distance. Okay. One motor. Same distance. Two motors. And last but not least, uh, I'm going to put this hose attachment onto this guy. And we're going to look at what it looks like with its full shot, but open. And then we're going to look at it with reducing nozzles so you guys can see the difference. Okay, same distance. Okay, that's a full. We're going to go with a reducing novel, nozzle that is flat reducing head. Okay, same distance. 
See how much difference reducing and focusing that airflow does. And then here is our nozzle, our needle nose nozzle, right? This one really is the most powerful one. And look how far away I am from the subject. So you can really see that this is incredibly, incredibly powerful. So now that we saw different types of airflow and different types of devices, I'm gonna use this flying pig. Um, it's a stand and hose dryer as a baseline for you. I'm gonna give you its stats. So you saw how it performed in its hose with its nozzles and also as a stand dryer. So let's go through the stats that come with the flying pig again to give you that baseline. Okay, so the air volume for this particular device is 240 CFM. Um, so that's something to compare to. The air volume is 28,000 FPM. This guy also uh, blows about 12 to 13 amps. Okay, so just to give you guys a baseline of what we're looking at, I will tell you this is I bought this guy uh, April of 2021, so almost two years, incredibly pleased with it and its price point. Um, but I will say that I use this on all types of dogs, all the way up to Black Russian Terriers, huge Samoyeds. So this is a really incredibly versatile and good dryer, especially because it has these attachments and I can make it a stand or a hose dryer. But this, I hope, gives you a baseline to understand that a very good working dryer for in a pro environment has the specific stats. This is what works for me. So hopefully that will give you guys a little more insight into choosing the right dryer for you. Well, all right, guys, that's about it. I hope this helps clarify what types of professional pet grooming dryers are available to you, how to use them safely, uh, also how to maintain them for their longevity and for their safety, and of course, a field test, a point of reference where you can choose the right dryer for you. Guys, if you like this video, we appreciate that thumbs up. Subscribe for more like it. We'll see you soon. Thanks.